All right, Lanny. So the interesting thing about real estate is in any market, you've always got an average. Mm -hmm. And most people look at averages, but just because there's an average doesn't mean to say that a lot of properties don't sell at above that average price, and by definition, therefore, someone sell it below average. So here's the thing. Would you like to be in a market where, say, the average price is 80000 and if you get something for 10% below average, you make 8000 Or would you rather buy something, say, for $2.8 million, and if you get it for 10% below average, You've now made a quarter of a million. Let me think about it. I think I choose the quarter of a million. <laughs> Especially if we can show you how it's as easy to buy that high-end home as it is to buy a cheaper one. Got it. That's really cool. But let me ask you something. You've been doing this a long time, over 35 years. Mm -hmm. Why do you still do it? You know, there are many reasons, but yeah, I've thought about this too. Firstly, I love it, that you can't do something this long without loving it. But I think... In its essence, real estate for me is a, a vehicle where I can be very creative. With most other things that you invest in, you can't do anything to them. What you buy is what you've bought and it stays that way till you sell it. But there's no limit to the creativity you can put into a piece of real estate. In fact, one of my books is called 101 Ways to Massively Increase the Value of Your Property Without Spending Much Money. And it seems like it's creative throughout the entire process. On the purchase side, you can be creative on how you purchase it. Absolutely. Then once you buy it, how you finance it, you you're fi very creative there. And, you then, know. and then once you take possession? Oh, then there's no limit to what you can do. What That's are some the of the things bit. that you, you see that add a ton of perceived value that people miss out on when they... Well, let me give you an example. Right now, it's a very prestigious thing to have as a smart home, to have everything automated. But we do know that the cost of turning a home into a smart home using conventional, you know, old school thinking, it costs you two, three hundred thousand dollars. Well, there's technology now where you can retrofit smart home technology into existing homes for a seemingly tiny amount, like for five thousand dollars, you can do all your lights and for another five thousand, you've got pretty much the entire home automated. So the, per, so the perceived value is a quarter of a oh, million. Perceived value is a quarter of a million. But you spent 10. You spent 10. And not only is this perceived value that's gone up, but the home is better. Like, I open my garage door not with a remote anymore, but through my cell phone. And I can whitelist anyone on my list. So the nanny and the, you know, any friends you want. Or if there's a plumber coming between four and six, you can program that in. And it opens it. No more lost remotes. And don't forget, every time someone loses a remote, your house is now kind of vulnerable because anyone who finds it can drive up and down the street or around the neighborhood looking to see which door it opens. So it's a perceived increase in value for a relatively small cost and tremendous benefits for the user. Doesn't it have GPS things now where it knows when you're close to the house? Oh, absolutely. How yeah, does mine, that work? Mine does that. Well, your phone knows where it is. So you have a program running. When, when I leave my home, even if I've forgotten to lock doors or set alarms or anything, it all happens automatically. And when I come home at night after dark, certain lights come on automatically, the alarm gets turned off, the doors open. And this technology has been around for a long time in cars. It just hasn't been adapted to homes yet. So. And how does it prevent burglary? Isn't there like randomization to it too? So if somebody's like... Oh, yes. Yeah, you don't just turn your lights on at dust, the outside lights. We, we have a randomization function in there so that um, it might be half an hour early or 20 minutes later. So anyone monitoring to see when the lights come, I never think, oh, this is the same time every day that's on a timer. Yeah. And, and why Paradise Valley? I mean, this is... I've, I've actually lived here and around here for 30 some years. So I know how great this place is. It's amazing. But what's your, you know, why, why do you think this place is great? What's so great about this well, place? Well, Paradise Valley is appealing primarily to residents for a number of features. I mean, everyone here in the, in the state knows that Paradise Valley is sort of at the, the top point of, of where you can live. Um, but there are some fundamental reasons. It's only 15 minutes drive from an international airport. And Phoenix Airport, Sky Harbor, is now the fifth largest airport in the country. Few people realize that. Um, it's also just a few minutes drive from all these major resorts. I mean, all these five-star resorts are around here in Paradise Valley. Um, we've got golf courses galore here. In fact, we can see one from where we stand now. So people come here for the golfing. Their spouses might want to go to spas. It's got great weather. Look at this. We have this sort of weather, you know, 320 days a year, roughly. It's phenomenal. Actually, I was, I was on the phone with one of my friends in Calgary yesterday. It was minus 21 yesterday in Calgary. Oh, gosh. And look at it. It's, yeah. it's going to be 80 today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. And it's the same winter. Yeah. And that's what happens. You know, people visit here either to go golfing or to visit friends or on a business conference. And they say, wow, is it like this all the time or is this an anomaly? And we say, no, it's like this all the time. And then they end up moving here. So we always joke with people. When we hear that they're coming to visit, we say, hey, would you like to save some money? And they say, yeah, of course. How? I say, well, 
don't buy a round trip, just buy a one-way ticket. And they said, well, how will I get home? And we said, well, by the time you're here, you won't want to go home anyway. That's great. And it's half tongue-in-cheek, but the fact that the growth rate of Phoenix has been so consistently high for the last 50 years shows that there's something luring people here. And one of those components is the weather, undoubtedly. Yeah, I know when, with my vacation rentals here and my rental property here, it's so easy to fill it. And even though the summers are hot and it sits empty during the summer, the rate of return that we get during the winter is amazing. Right. And you, you don't even have to, you could leave it empty during the summer, it's no big deal. Right. And that's another, you're reminding me of something else. There are so many things that we don't have time to go into, but it's um, sports season here where they do all their training programs. And then well, a lot of homes, training. yeah, spring training, a lot of homes get rented out as vacation rentals during spring training for what for anyone in any other part of the country would say, well, that's impossible. Do you mean monthly instead of weekly or something like that? Because it's thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. um, and that's another reason why Paradise Valley is good. So it's good for people who want to live here, but it's also good for investors because usually the returns on residential properties aren't that great. But in Paradise Valley, if you, if you do things right, and that's where, you, you know, you can't just get something at random and hope. You've got to have a strategy and work that strategy. But if you do it right, you can have handsome returns that pay off your mortgage over time. That's awesome. Yeah, so tell me about, like I see the lifestyle. If somebody were, let's say, in Alberta, and they wanted a second place here to get out of the cold, you know, they could literally block out certain dates of the calendar, come on down, enjoy the sun, and then when they're gone, you know, we could rent their place for them and cash flow it and pay for their mortgage. That's that, exactly right. To me, right. that seems like the perfect scenario. Right. And so, many Canadians do that. Apparently 34% of foreign investors in this market are from Canada. And interestingly, many of them end up toggling that situation. Yes, they live in Canada and they come down here for a few weeks or maybe a month or two of summery weather during the winter. But eventually they say, it's so nice here, why would we go back there? Well, they've got family and maybe business interests. So they end up essentially living here and then going back there for a month or two at a time. And isn't there, is there a limit on how long they can stay here? Is it six months, something like oh, that? Oh, there is, yes. For most foreigners, there's a, a limit to how long you can stay here. Um, but many, I know many Canadians who've ended up, uh, you know, getting a permanent residence here, a green card, basically. Gotcha. Because they just like it so much. They sneak over the Canadian border? Um, I, I, I don't know. Is there I, any I, tunnels? I, I, I don't think so. There's not the financial incentive to build tunnels. I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's great. Um, anything else you want to add about Paradise Valley or this area? No, just that, you know, to, to get back to your question, I, I love being creative. Some things are inherently creative and some are not. They're analytical. And it's interesting what you study at university, for instance, most subjects are very analytical. If you study English, you take a sentence, pull the components to pieces, identify the subject, the object, and the verb, and then put them all together. History is analytical. Mathematics is generally analytical. There are very few things that are creative. Sculpture is one, architecture, engineering, and my background, of course, is engineering. So I think I come from a background of always creating things. And real estate is one of those things where you can be very creative. You can, you can let your imagination run rife and then implement those things you imagine. For instance, even what we were talking about, the smart homes. You know, when I was a kid, obviously long before cell phones and satellite phones and GPSs, we would dream about this and say, I wonder if we'll ever see it in our lifetimes. And look at the changes in the last five years, Lanny, where, mm -hmm. you know, we now do everything on our smartphones, whereas before when we had Nokias generally and Ericsson's, you know, we, we didn't think that would be possible within five years. So the, the field is wide open to do incredible things to home to just make them fun and, and interesting and also lucrative. Yeah. So when I think about our team, I kind of think about it in three parts. You know, if I'm like hearing you say that, it almost seems like on the on the front end we have you know Jay the appraiser you know largest volume appraiser in the state of Arizona over the last decade has done literally billions of dollars worth of appraisals you got him on the front end finding the best possible deal best possible solution once they buy then we have you adding the creativity on on the value well not only on the buy side because obviously you've been involved with a ridiculous amount i mean you literally wrote the book on real estate which is awesome but not only on the buy side saying is that a good deal or not a good deal but on the creative side of what can we do to this property to make it even more amazing exactly and on the sell side i'm i come in on the sell and the cash flow side it's kind of a cool dynamic it's a very I'm super strong excited trio yes yeah. no i am too i am too this is gonna be cool yeah so if you're interested in learning more about how to work with our team, go ahead and click on the link. It should be somewhere above or below this, this video, and we'd be happy to talk to you and find out if it's a good fit.